Hello everyone, today I'm going to share what's in my freezer and I'm also going to make a fish broth. As you can hear, I sound like a brand new woman today. I was sick for the past few days and now I feel so much better. I'm filming this after I ate the broth by the way. So I made the broth yesterday, had a nice big bowl and with just one bowl, I woke up this morning feeling rejuvenated, refreshed. I feel like a brand new person this morning. So that broth was a lifesaver. It worked its magic overnight and now I feel so much better and you'll see how I make it in this video. So I opened up my freezer to look for the fish. It was at the bottom of the freezer. So I said, you know what, maybe you all want to see what's in the freezer of a foodie. So today's video, you're going to get to go freezer diving with me. You'll see what's in my freezer and you'll also see me making a nice immune boosting and rejuvenating fish broth. So keep watching to see more. Hey everyone, so I'm finally going to make my fish broth, so I'll go in freezer diving to look for the pizza snapper I have in there. So I wanted to show you all what the freezer of a foodie looks like. And I usually make notes of stuff we have in the freezer. I haven't updated it for a while, so some of these things probably got used. And then I probably added some stuff in there and didn't add it to the list too. So... You could take a quick look at the stuff we have in there. But I'll show you as I'm going through. So the first thing I have here is some wild blueberries. I got this in Costco. The best place to buy things like this is in like warehouse stores like Costco or if you find it cheap at a normal grocery. We use this in our oatmeal. Sometimes in smoothies, sometimes just with yogurt, but usually for oatmeal. Hot peppers, we buy them when they're cheap and just freeze them. This is cut sweet pepper. I don't know what made me do this, but I just cut up sweet pepper here. I julienned it. So this is definitely gonna be soggy for a stir fry, but it might go good in like a pilau or something. Or some type of rice dish. This is cut up cassava for soup. So, for like corn soup and stuff. But I'll pull out some of this today for my broth. This is sea moss I made. And I uh, put it in these ice cubes. and Well, not cubes, but circles. And I'm going to pop them out and put them in Ziploc bags. I... Add one of this to my smoothie or to my oatmeal for Cruz and I. More sweet pepper. Saltfish. More saltfish. Spinach. This makes good, um, like regular bhaji or kalori. Um, I never run out of cassava. I always have these big five pound bags in the freezer. We make oil dung with that. Oil dung or for soups or just anything we feel like eating. This is seam from my mom's tree. She brought this up recently for us. Curry seam. Not tree, yeah? Vine. Because <laughs> seam grows on a vine, right? This is serrano peppers. Trust me, you'll see a lot of peppers in here. And today I'm going to have to make a new list or I'm going to have to update that list. This is chicken breast. So if we want to make like a quick pilau or a quick butter chicken or... Actually no, scratch that. Not butter chicken. I can't stand chicken breast and butter chicken. Basically this is for Kevin because I don't like chicken breast. So whatever he wants to make with this, like fillets or whatever, pan fried, he could do that. I have a small bag of peeled shrimp here. I said I didn't have to put this in the broth because it's a little bit. Actually, I'll keep this to do a nice curry shrimp and aloo. More serrano. This is, I think, shatine. Curry shatine that my mom brought recently as well. So yeah, it's curry shatine. This is crab. <laughs> Dungeness crab. Kevin buy this for me for a while and I need to use it to make something. And I'm studying if to put it in the broth or not. Let me know. 
Would you all put this in broth or you think that's a waste? Because I could boil this to make my stock and that's going to add so much flavor and so much health benefits. Or should I keep it for a uh, curry? Curry crab and dumpling. That's what I was keeping it for. But you let me know what I should do with it. <laughs> Even though you're going to see this video way after I make my decision. But I have cut a pumpkin here. Pumpkin. In Trinidad, we don't say pumpkin. We say pumpkin. So there was six cups of pumpkin in here, but I was using from it. Cut up okra. This is good to make. Um, you can make fried okra and aloo with this. You can make gumbo, jambalaya. That's what I usually keep it for. <laughs> or kitri. I usually make kitri for cruise with this. Lentils for cruise. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna take this out and, and um give him this today. See the date on it? 1-19-23. And then Kevin got these Japanese style ramen noodles. I may or may not grab one of these and uh boil it on the side to eat with my broth. I'll see. Two packages. We have ground chicken, and this ground chicken is to make Cruz's chicken nuggets. So, I usually make homemade chicken nuggets for him. I guess I'm one of those almond moms <laughs> that people say. But I want him to have good, wholesome food, and the only way I could ensure of that is by me cooking his food. So, you know what? I'm going to leave this out today, and I'm going to make his chicken nuggets for him. I'll probably make some patties, some nuggets, and some pasta. More okra. Like I said, I like to be prepared. I like to have enough stuff. Okay, this is a trout filet. We bought this in Sands Club. Okay, this is big shrimp for, um, like pepper shrimp. So, this is the jumbo jumbo shrimp. This is frozen Zabuka. So I did this February 7th. So when Zabuka on sale and you get nice ones, scoop them out, cube them up, put them on a tray to freeze, and then put them in some freezer bags. And then they actually, um, re they actually thawed really good. And Cruz loves Zabuka, so that's why I always like to keep it on hand. And then you can actually make like uh, guacamole or zabuka choca with this. He loves avocado toast. So that's what I'll make. Hi pumpkin. Another bag of cassava. Like I said, we go through cassava in here like that. Because I make cassava bites for cruise with like salmon or tuna. And then I make oil down for us. I make a lot of his food with cassava in it. Like, um, those little fish cakes with cassava in it is so, so, so good. I make it for me too. This here is the pimento my mom recently brought up. So, I'm still working on the first bag. So, I'm going to deal with this bag probably by next month. This is some wild Pacific pink salmon fillets. This here is Kevin's ground beef. Um, 7327. So hey, Popo, be careful. Be careful, okay? Okay, I had to put on the gloves to go in now. Okay, next we have some pork belly. This is what we bought in Costco the other day. This is for either chasu, ramen, or jira pork. Yeah. I love me some jira pork belly. This is looking like pork shoulder. I don't know. This is wings. Every time Kevin cuts the whole chicken, he just puts aside the wings. A next bag of wings. So when we're ready to have wing night, we have a lot of wings. I think this is what I was looking for. So this is the snapper. We got this from Kevin's friend. He went fishing and he brought this back for us. So this is what I'm going to be using for my broth. So this was caught quite out in the ocean. So 
this is some good stuff i love when i get um nice fresh fish like when people catch fish because you know it ain't sitting long or anything as soon as it comes home it gets cleaned and goes straight into the freezer more pepper turkey drumsticks kevin bought this but i don't know what he's gonna do with it yet you have a lot of stuff here boy it have a whole ham in here more fish this one look like snapper as well so i got our next piece of fish here this is red snapper i see in some bone there so i'll use this for my stock so this is gonna go perfect in my stock this is turkey drumstick turkey drumstick beef ribs pork ground pork um grated cassava for poon and the side here is peppers um hot pepper so i'm gonna repack the freezer now oh i see and there's a whole ham underneath there too so i'm gonna repack the freezer now and start with my fish broth check now Yes. Like you sense camera and you sort of change direction. Check, check love up now. How can I think just now? Father Your boy son. doesn't want to walk on his own. He wants somebody to pick him up. <laughs> Ole, watch how my son love oatmeal now. Watch. Yummy! Yummy, yummy, yummy! So this is just steel cut oats with some blueberries. And I cooked it with water. We don't cook oats with milk. Back in the days, yeah, but now I just cook it with water. Hi, sweetie. So this is the state of the next freezer. The fridge freezer. <laughs> so I wasn't going to do a video on this, but I'll just show you a quick run through of it. It needs cleaning out. So maybe by showing you all it, it's going to inspire me to clean it out. So I'm just going to empty it. So we have bread, we buy bread in bulk and we freeze it. It just works out better that way because um, bread goes bad really quickly. So it's better to just buy it, freeze it and then reheat it as needed. This needs to get thrown out. <laughs> this should also get thrown out. This is a Sunday from Sam's. This is like a week old. <laughs> this is Decimos. This is frozen blueberries. So when this is done, I'll open the next pack and the next freezer. And then this is high crust. High crust that we got on sale after Thanksgiving. So I just bought it. Just, you know, in case. This is... My mom brought this from Trinidad. I didn't open it yet, but maybe I'll open it soon. And then to the back here. I have grind all two bags of grind all to the back so I'll just keep that for when I make in dal brie more spinach this is fruits for smoothies so all these smoothie stuff to the back there I wouldn't pull those out this is what we call salt butter and turn that even though it's not butter it's margarine so this is golden ray margarine my sister brought this when she was coming and uh, it's just in the freezer here. Last time I used it was when I was making soup for my parents. They love their, their golden ray. So I used it to make some um, smoked bone pigtail soup for them. So let me just clean it out a little bit. You know, as you're moving things in and out of the freezer, it tends to get a little dirty. And then I have some ice here. I like to have ice, especially when it's 
warm outside. We don't have ice maker, so we just buy like the bags of ice from the gas station. Or I like Sonic ice, <laughs> so sometimes I like to go buy Sonic and buy ice. Okay, so here I have some mixed vegetables. This is what I use to make it tree for cruise. So I do like a rice cook up with dal and plenty veggies, spinach, okra. You know, something that's nutrient dense for him. This is mozzarella cheese. So it's just portioned into four pieces and then we usually just take out a piece when we need it for like macaroni pie or whatever we make in, like sandwiches or whatever. Again, shopping in bulk. It's good to have freezer space when you like to shop in bulk. My guilty pleasure is when I go to the Asian grocery, I like to buy this pork, Chinese celery and shrimp dumpling. It's so good. On days where I don't know what to cook, I'll just put together a quick like uh, chicken lo mein and I'll make this on the side too. It's so yummy. Here I have some wonton wrappers. I didn't even know this was in here. More smoothie stuff. These are ice packs. Oh, more wonton wrappers, okay. More wonton wrappers. Okay, so, let's see that here. Strawberries. Yeah, this is strawberries. And then these are ice packs. More ice packs. It's good to have ice packs. So, I just repacked the underneath section. Ah, oh, Kevin and his ice cream. This is Blue Bell ice cream. This is our local Texas brand. There's a um, factory right here in Branham, which is about an hour away from us. And I really want to visit. And we always have ground turkey, because when we do our, our meal prep, it's usually brown rice, ground turkey, and um, salad. So, two packages of ground turkey. Garlic. Must have garlic. This garlic is so good. We get this at Sam's Club. And um, I'm so glad I'm showing you all this freezer right now because it seems like we need to buy more. I didn't see any in the next freezer. And then this bag is like halfway through. So I'll get some more. But this is so potent. You would think for frozen garlic it wouldn't be that potent. But it's really good. And it, it comes in handy because it um, cuts my cooking time. So the prep work is not as bad, you know, having to peel garlic and all those things. I have my garlic already peeled. This is Cruz's meal prep, so banana waffles. I made this the other day for him. This is more cheese. This is sliced provolone, I think. Kevin, this is provolone? Yeah. Yeah, so he says it's provolone. This is for sandwiches. And you'll see random bags of pepper in here too. This is from my Auntie Molly's tree. She gave me this. She gave me this like two, three years ago, but I still have it and I still use it. And it's still hot. So it's like ghost pepper and cayenne pepper and some little different varieties of pepper in there. This is ginger. I don't know why it's in this bag, but as ginger. This is pimento. Frozen. More of Cruz's meal prep that I need to I need to top this up. This is his oat bars. He loves these. And he goes through this really quickly. So I'll make more and I'll show you all how to make it. This is okra. This is whole okra. So when I'm making soup, I usually use this. But for the broth, I already um, bought fresh one. So this I'll save. Yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of random stuff in the freezer. That comes in handy though. But we like to be prepared and have stuff on hand. So more peppers. This is Carolina Reaper. I bought this last year at H-E-B. H-E-B had um, Carolina Reaper. This is more Serrano pepper. So that was supposed to be in the next freezer. This is more ginger. Kevin got this at the Asian grocery the other day and it looked really nice, so he couldn't resist. This is seasoned barbecue salmon, skin on and boneless. So I have a next bag of this in the next freezer. 
But the next one is just plain. I don't have any seasoning. This is some hot peppers that my mother-in-law sent. This is real hot. This is some pimentos, frozen pimento peppers. Some more sea moss. This needs to be put in as a block. This is more pepper. This is scorpion pepper, actually. This is some um, betta fish barramundi. We love this. Um, if you check out my Instagram, I made some steamed veggies with this and some mashed cassava or whipped cassava. And then more scorpion. Like I said, we have real pepper. We're pepper mouths in this house. More scorpion. I need to put all the scorpion together. Um, what is this? I think it's time to throw this out. This is like some small pepper. Yeah, I'll throw this one out. This is hot pepper, or what we call Congo pepper in Trinidad. Mommy um, grind it up and bring it when she was coming last year. This is chicken apple smoked sausage. Kevin, you know you have smoked sausage in your freezer? That's the chicken one, right? Yeah. So, how are you going to make it? I was saving that for the bread. Oh. Gumbo? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kevin has this spicy breaded chicken breast filet. This is so, so, so good. He, um, yeah, I know I say good a lot. Sorry. <laughs> he made a sandwich the other day with some pretzel bread. And it was amazing. So if you have a Sam's Club close to you, check this out. Spicy chicken breast filet. Try it out. These salmon burgers are great to have on hand, especially on days where you just don't have time to cook. You could just put this together quick, pan fry it, and you could wrap it in lettuce. Put some veggies, or you can even do a sandwich with bread. I prefer it with the lettuce, um, just to make it, you know, low carb. And I haven't really been eating bread these days, which is why bread has to be frozen here, because we only keep bread mainly for cruise. And then this is shrimp and pork egg rolls. And so I don't know when we'll make this. So this is the situation on the fridge door. This is some watermelon hibiscus. Um, I don't know what this is. Something with alcohol. It's like an alcohol cool kind of thing. Oh, margarita. I never had these, so maybe one of these days when I feel them for something, I'll try it. We have some kiss cakes. Mommy brought this up when she was coming, but of course, I'm trying my best not to eat too much dessert these days, so I knew it would go bad, so I just froze them. So we have chocolate. This is the pink one. This is the best one, in my opinion. The next pink one. This is some more ice here. I don't know how to stand up here. This is Nick's ice cream. This is so, so, so yummy. It's a Swedish style light ice cream. It has nine nut carbs per pint and 370 calories per pint. So Kevin loves this ice cream, so that's why he always has this. And then this is my Handel's ice cream, pistachio. It's my favorite. That's a local ice cream here too. Um, why we have so much ginger in this freezer? Look more ginger on the door. And then this is our meal prep stuff. This is all ground turkey. Ground turkey. Yeah. So we just prep it like this and just pull out one or two bags. And that's how we um, do our meal prepping. And then some cookies here. Um, when we buy it in bulk and it remains, I don't want it to go bad, so I'll just freeze it. And sometimes I give Cruz a little treat. And then here I have some grated coconut. This is actually supposed to be with the grated cassava to make bone. I don't know how it ends up here. And then on the door, Kevin has some type of meat in the back there. I don't know what it is, but basically that is the fridge 
freezer situation. <laughs> the freezer situation. I don't even want to show you all my fridge because it's in our state right now. So, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed seeing <laughs> inside my freezer. So I have all my ingredients here for the broth. Green fig, of course. You can't have a broth without green fig. Edos, and I love edos in any type of soup, so I'm going to add that today. You don't have to. I think broth is simple. It's just carrots, aloo, and green fig. And some people just choose to add other root provisions. And that's me. I like it more like a soup. So okra, um, this is a sweet potato, a piece of ginger. The ginger I'll use for my stock. I'm making a seafood stock on the side um, with ginger and fever grass or lemongrass. Um, so the okra, pumpkin or pumpkin, aloo, uh, carrots, lime of course. Some saibo scallion, thyme. I'm not looking too right just because it was in the fridge a while and the grocery had no fresh thyme. Maybe I went too late. But yeah, so this is what I'm using. I'll also use some of that nice leafy celery that I showed you all at the grocery. And some other things. I have hot pepper, of course. Um, like I said, I'm going to make my stock first. My seafood stock like I usually do. Lots of flavor, lots of health benefits, plenty of collagen, really good for our body and soul. So I'm going to get started on that. But first I need to take care of my little popo first. He's going to get a little bim bim or a bed and then he's going to go take his nap. And then I will come and sort out all my ingredients. And of course I have my fish here. It's just thawing out. So when this finish thaw out, I will... Season it up. And then you might want to set up your grill too, right? Or you wouldn't set it up yet. Smelling like it's a little right, but not smelling like green things. Smelling more on the right side. <clears throat> That's why sometimes I prefer the skinny up egg. I hope this fig tea is good. Well, I think this is going to taste good. Because <laughs> it's a little ripe. Slightly. You know you could use um, green plantain as a substitute too, right? One day I couldn't find green fig at all. So I said let me um, buy some green plantain and it worked. This is a little bigger. So I like this Japanese sweet potato, I find it nice. Cut everything up like the same size, so it cooks the same time, so When I make broth, the veggies usually cook in 25 to 30 minutes. And everything is perfectly cooked. Once you overcook it, it starts to mash up and the broth um, starts to get opaque as opposed to clear how you want it. So that's why you have to time it and make sure you take it off when it's fully cooked and not overcooked.
And Ellie Troy, Ellie Pilar, yes? So you know the trademark carrot cut is like this, right? In circles for broth. And some people hate it. I know Kevin don't like when I cut carrots like this. And Kevin? You don't like the circle cut, aren't? <laughs> Somebody commented on one of my videos who told me that. But for some reason, like, to me, like, it's not a broth if you don't cut the, the carrots like this. Like, I know I'm just wasting time here because I could just do this on a chopping board. So I'm washing the bandania to make some seasoning. So I have my ingredients here to make my seafood stock. And I'm going to add some water to this and it's going to boil and extract all the goodness from all the ingredients we added here. It's going to extract the oils from the fish, the collagen, and all the oils from everything we added here and all the nutrients that we need for our mind, body, and soul. So this broth is going to be so healthy. So when this boils, I'm going to let everything um, get extracted from all the ingredients and then I'm going to strain it and that's going to be the base for our fish broth So first here I have a fish collar. So this is a Red snapper collar. So it has lots of bones in it That's what you want when you're making a stock you want a bony piece so you can use the fish bones You can use the fish head. I use um, Shrimp shells as well. Kevin threw out my shrimp shells from the freezer. So I'm upset about that, but <laughs> Uh, will make do with this. When you go to your fish market, ask them if they can um, fillet the fish for you, give you the bones, um, the head. That's how I do it. I ask them to separate the head, I ask them to fillet it, and then I use all the bones from the center as well as the head, and I use the head and the bones to make my stock. So you can also use crab too. Um, or even lobster shells, whatever type of uh, seafood shells you have. I also have some bandana, of course. And, and you don't have to chop this up anyhow. You could just throw it in the pot as is. I just chop it up into like chunky pieces. So bandana, you could use cilantro. I have a stalk of saivo scallion and I left the um, root. That's going to add lots of flavor, lots of health benefits. Fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which is great for our heart and brain. So this stock is going to add such a boost to your body. So definitely try it out. I posted a short version of this on my Instagram a few months ago, probably last year. And so many people asked me for a recipe. So here you go. I also have thyme, some celery. This is leafy celery, celery with the stalk. Ginger, of course, for my runny nose. It's going to bring everything down. The last time I made a broth like this was last time I had a, the sniffles back in like September, I think, when I came back from Trinidad. I have some whole peppercorns here. This is the black pepper before it's ground. Um, so the ginger, I have garlic. If you have garlic with the skin on, feel free to use the skin. That has lots of benefits as well. I'm using onion with the skin on, fever grass or lemongrass. Um, a carrot. What else? Let me see if I forget anything. I told you all thyme, right? So thyme, hot pepper, the fish, of course. And you can add whatever herbs and flavors you want to add to it. I have some pimento berries or allspice berries. I'm just going to add four of that because it's very potent. So now I'm going to fill up this pot and let it boil. I wish I had one of those stoves with the with the tap above it so I could just like pull the tap over my pot and just pull it up. That'll be in my next kitchen. So just turn your heat on to medium high and let this come up to a boil and then cover it. I forgot to add a little bit of salt but you can add as much or as little as you want or you could omit the salt and just add it to your fish broth. 
Look at this weather. It's a good day for fish broth. So I have my red snapper here. And these are fillets. I don't know if I mentioned that to you earlier. These are snapper fillets, so they don't have any bone, which is perfect. You don't have to worry about swallowing um, picker, any fish picker. So picker means fine bones. So all you know how to keep my seasoning real simple. All I add into this fish is some salt. And of course, this going in last, so you don't need to season it too much. Just a little salt and some green seasoning. This green seasoning has bandana, cilantro, garlic, and pimentos. Alejandra Tanda. And Karen just cut off, so I'm trying to hurry up and cook this. Because my stove inside is electric, and of course, if Karen cut off, my stove wouldn't work. So I didn't put any pepper in this, so I'm just gonna go in with my hand. Massage that in. And of course, I added like the ginger and stuff to the stock. If you're not making a stock, then you would want to season your fish with just a little piece of ginger too. Especially if you're sick, the ginger helps to clear your nose and your throat. So now I'm just going to let this sit and marinate for a little bit while I um, clean up the kitchen. So while I let this marinate and stuff, I'll go wash up all the ways, clean up. So then when I'm finished, I don't have any ways to wash. So let me know what's your favorite type of fish to make fish broth with. For me, my ultimate favorite is red snapper, of course. And um, I like barramundi too. When I buy the barramundi fillets, I like to use that. And then my mom uses croaker or crocro sometimes. So broth action happening here. I have my root provisions, my carrots, my pumpkin and everything here. Okra. Um, some celery that chopped up. Sai, scallion. Of course, you know, for broth you had to have the lime. Green seasoning. And this is to make a little pepper sauce. So here I have some ingredients for my special broth pepper sauce. So I have a red onion that I just diced up, some Thai bird's eye chili, or you could use some good pepper if you have. I put one hot pepper. I might add a next one because I want this to be real hot. Um, two cloves of garlic, some cilantro. I like the nice citrus undertone of cilantro, so that's why I added that. And I will add, let me add a little bit of green seasoning one time because this has pimento in it. So I add that and I'm going to add some lime juice to this, about the juice of two limes. And then the secret is to add some of that stock that I made. Look at this green olive. Karen keeps cutting off and coming back on. This is what all you would call sick rain. <laughs> Mommy would say that. She could say that is the cream. She could say me and come and I gave him for no broth, not I the cream. What's the point of eating broth when you're getting sick? When you eat the broth, you're getting sick when you're going home. So this is my nutritious seafood stock. Look at that. Look at the stock. It looks like water, but it's so rich. It's going to do so much for your body. I like to make a big batch of stock and freeze it. So when I need to make soup, I um, just throw it out. But Kevin likes to throw away all my stock when I put it in the freezer. He say I waste in space. So I forgot to tell you all, this boiled for an hour and I'm going to let it sit for the next like 20 to 30 minutes and steep and get out everything from in there. 
This is a good piece of fish here. I'm going to take this out to put in the broth. So this is the stock. I have a little bit more to strain, but I want to pour this into the pot before this overflows. So because of the rain and current keep cutting off, I want to cook this real quick. So I'm just going to add the stock in there and just let the broth boil today. Usually I just chunky it. Chunky all the onion and everything, but today I just add in everything. So check out my next broth video where I chunky the ingredients. The stock goes in here. This is the rest. So now I'm just gonna let this boil. This figure I love on. Look at it. I hope it cooked good, you know. I should have just buy the green planted instead. So I'm gonna let this boil for about 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, I'll come check it, make sure it's fully cooked, and then I'll add the fish in and the okras. So into here, I'll add some green seasoning. Let this boil. And the green season has everything. It has um, garlic and stuff. I personally do like to add onion in broth because I don't like to see onion floating on food but especially in soup that's why I put it in the stock so I'm not gonna add any to this so once this boils and it cooks completely I want the aloo and the sweet potato to get tender but not falling apart so like right before it gets to that stage then I'll add the fish in because it's gonna continue to cook when the fish goes in so I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. So to my little broth pepper sauce, I'm going to add some salt, of course. <clears throat> you can add some salve in there to a scallion. I'm going to cut this lime. Hmm, this lime I have up in it. Dry. You could use lemon too or any type of citrus. They have like um, some orange, grapefruit, anything acidic. So now in here goes the stock. And then, and then just mix it. Looking good, eh? I wish I like it smell it. it. Smells so good. Smelling like a lime pepper sauce, but on steroids. <laughs> Even with my stuffy nose, I smell on this. So I know the fish broth with this pepper, but I'm lush. So the broth bubbling away, and I add a little chunks of ruku powder to it just to give it a nice color. I find the color was a little dull. Now I'm adding in my celery the leaves and the stalk. I don't know, I love to see seasoning floating in soup. My aunt used to make a real nice soup, a veggie soup though. Her broth was good too, but her veggie soup used to lash. And the one thing I loved about her soup was one, the flat dumplings. She used to roll out the dumplings and cut it up flat. And then the next thing was, she always had fresh seasonings floating on top. She would cut it up really fine. She didn't have food processor and thing long time. So she was accustomed to doing everything by hand. She would chip up the seasoning fine and add it in the soup. And she was one of the best cooks ever. She used to make a nice crab and dumpling too. So I'm gonna cover this and let it continue to cook. And once it's nearly ready, I'll add the fish in. So the okra going in. The provisions nice and tender but they're not like falling apart so that's what we want. Papa? Oh. <laughs> Then he said he wanted to sleep with me. Mm -hmm. I go and I lie down, prepare to close my hand, and I 
I'm gonna add the fish in now. Seasoned fish. Again, shock every time I touch the basin. Mm -hmm. so weird. Probably the house has started everything. No, I think it's the uh, range, the thing here. So to the basin here, I'm going to add a little bit of water to get all the seasoning out. Yeah. This is your lunch. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to gently stir this, because since it's fillets, I don't have bone to hold it together, so it's going to be very delicate. So you want to be very gentle. I have some pieces here of fish. You could talk. I have some pieces of fish that I took out from the um, collarbone that was in the stock. So I just took it out. So this needs a little bit of salt. I'm gonna squeeze some lime in there and nearly done. Squeeze in some lime. You could choose to do this in your bowl, you don't have to do it to the whole pot. I just add in a little bit. I'm not gonna change the flavor or anything, it's just gonna neutralize the fishy fishy smell and flavor. Okay, so our broth is ready. I gotta turn it off. The only thing about this is like the uh, fish might fall apart a little because it um, do have the bone, but that's okay. It fully cooked, so now it's just time to eat. You eating some Yeah, six seven sauce. No, 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 no. I'll give it mommy a little bit of everything. Don't watch my bowl now, it's a shame right now. <laughs> Mandy, come for broth. She's waiting on this broth for my days now. Five days. Five days. Let me see the first taste does. Melted. Oh, it lashed in like Brian Charles Zara. <laughs> you looking like you got blue in your mouth with that. No. Mommy ball and body pepper, but what she? I put the Thai chilies in it and two normal red pepper, hot Let me pepper. see if this guy really cooked demon. What's this? Fish. That fish tastes real good though. Like fresh, fresh, fresh. He cleaned it and he filleted it so it had no bone. Mm. And, um, it was real easy. I just cut it up in smaller pieces. So I'm packing up my them. They have two containers, bro. So next time I see it, it should be very good. You should Somebody be brand new. Me. Somebody give me oh. What? <laughs> You should be brand new next time I see you. Umbrella. Check my name, umbrella there. Hmm. Hmm. Latest fashion. So I pack up some broth for my mom and my sister, and now it's time for me to eat.
So let me put my pepper. This pepper is like all you. All I need to make this. It's so, so, so yummy. My mom kept putting it in her food. She loves it. Check it. Gosh, this looks so, so, so good. We're just gonna bring down all the coal. The green fig actually hold up nice. So I'm happy for that. Look at that nice tin broth. So Alia, it's time to eat now. I'm so excited. I've been waiting on this broth for the last like week or so. For me, when I cook, I have to go bathe first. I make sure I'm clean and then I can sit and enjoy my food. And when I cook like a large amount of food, like roti and all kind of different curries, like I don't, I feel like I can't eat it. It's take like a few hours and then I would be able to actually sit down and enjoy it. I don't know, that's just me. Like when I hustle in the kitchen, like I just can't eat after. I don't know, but I just really enjoy other people's food though. Like if other people cook for me, I can really enjoy it. So now I'm gonna taste this fish broth. God, just by smelling it, like my taste buds tingling, I'm excited. Mmm. That papa saying all things. Mmm. Ooh, that papa hot. It's stinging, but it's nice. It's tasty. Let me try the green fig. It actually tastes good. Mmm. Even though the fig was full, still lashing. Mm. My taste buds dancing with joy right now. I like I can already feel the cool coming down. Like I feel it all here. Coming down. This is just what my body needed. Mm. And the sweet potato and the aloo and stuff, it's so soft and nice, but it didn't fall apart. It's nice and buttery. Let me try a piece of the fish. Mm. The fish has a nice sweet buttery taste. And I could just feel like the omega 3s in my body already. And so many health benefits in this. The fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids, great for your brain, great for your heart. And of course, oak rose and green fig, sweet potato, um, and the carrots and everything. They all have their own health benefits. And that nice thin broth that's loaded with flavor. And um, remember, we made the stock, so the stock was full of nutrients. You can't go wrong with this fish broth. I could just hold this bowl like this and just drink the the broth or the broth. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed watching how I make the fish broth and then my freezer dive. This is all I needed for Mother's Day, to be honest. This fish broth just wake me up. It gave me my powers back, <laughs> my mommy powers. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Seeing me make fish broth and freezer diving. Let me know what you want to see next. You can comment it below. Give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, feel free to share it with your friends and your family. And subscribe if you haven't already. It means a lot to the channel when you subscribe and when you interact in the comments. Because it shows me that you're interested in the videos and it tells me that you want me to make more like this. So if you do want me to make more videos like this, comment it below, subscribe, like, and do all the good stuff. So I'm gonna mash up this fish broth right now and probably go take a nap with cruise. Cause this thing is just lashing. Like I don't even know how to describe it. I wish you all could taste some, but I'll call her name when I eat it. Look at this. Kevin buy this nice fancy ramen bowl. He bought two of this. Um, to make homemade ramen and of course it's coming in handy right now 
So thanks again for being here. I'll see you all next time. Bye.